pelvic floor muscles, where they're located and how they support your pelvis is the subject of this video. I have a model of pelvis here. And while I've taken out the internal organs that go in there, I want you to look at this pelvis as a bowl. Inside this bowl, there, is, there are muscles, a bunch of muscles that are at the bottom of the bowl. And of course, the walls of the bowl. So the floor is not independent of the rest of the pelvis and interconnected with each other and with the muscles of the walls and the muscles that actually, they're influenced by the muscles that are actually connected to the pelvis itself. The pelvis itself is consisted of three bones, your ilium, your sacrum in the back, and in the front, they come together to form the pubic bone. In the back is where the SI joint or sacroiliac joints are, and the spine is connected to it as well. These holes right here, or these sockets right here, is where the hip joint is formed by the thigh bone going into this, forming a ball and socket joint. So the socket is provided by the pelvis, and the ball is provided by your thigh bone. So the way the connection is, how um, um, stable and functional the hip joints are directly influences the pelvis itself. So does the connection above, which is the spine. Your posture above directly impacts this, the base of your trunk, which is your pelvis. So when we go internally through the vagina and or anus to try to access the floor, there are a lot of muscles we can't even get to. And the most important question we should ask is, why did they get tight or weak to begin with? That does not mean, well, I did this and this happened. The incident is what we can perhaps, as there's one incident, however, most of the times it's over course of time and as a result of a gradual disintegration of the functionality there in the pelvis. The incident, let's say if it's childbirth or if it's some kind of an accident that involves the pelvis, does not necessarily solve a problem. What matters is the biomechanical degradation of the function. In other words, what happened to the movements of the joints here, the joints above and connected to the pelvis, and how do they involve the muscles of the pelvic floor, the walls, and all the muscles that go connect to the pelvis or go around the pelvis. Until we address those, we will not have stability of the pelvis. And without the stability of the house that pelvic floor is the floor of, we will not have long lasting effect from the treatments that we're receiving. That means regardless of what the symptoms are related to pelvic floor dysfunction, the stability of the pelvis has to be addressed. So I hope out of this video, while you understand what the pelvic floor looks like and everything else that I discussed, the one thing that I'm getting across is without the stab stabilization of the pelvis and what's connected to it, in other words, whole body movement, correction and stability, pelvic floor dysfunction exists. It exists in children, it exists in men, it exists in young people, and the stereotype no longer should exist. If you are and have not subscribed to the channel, make sure you do that. I'm Dr. Shakib from Core Pelvic Floor Therapy in Irvine, California. For those of you who are not in California, but you're in other states or other countries, 
we do have coaching opportunities that can, you can be a part of. Just visit the description box to see where else you can find us and how else you can be in touch with our office. Until next time, take care. Thank you.